It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley are here in their respective corners. We will talk about some changes for Cortana and Microsoft. The search for Windows 1809 continues. And, yes, some Xbox news. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 594, recorded Wednesday, November 7th, 2018. The Warwick Blue Sox. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans, introducing Rate Shield Approval if you're in the market to buy a home. Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And by Slide Belts by Brig Taylor. High quality, comfortable ratchet belts that are easy to adjust. If you want a better belt, go to slidebelts.com slash twit and use the code twit for 20% off. And by Capterra. Find software solutions for your business needs. Capterra is a free website with over 600 categories of business software. Don't forget to visit capterra.com slash windows to get your free copy of the big book of free software. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with the two most... Those two? <laughs> most two <laughs> fake news purveyors, me. Mr. Paul Therott from Therott.com. No, nothing but real news here. Mary Jo Foley from AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Hello, Paul and Mary Jo. How are you today? Hello, Leo. Hello, Leo. Good to see you. We were, before uh, the uh, show began, watching Mike, uh, Samsung's event. They're having mm -hmm. a developer event in San Francisco. There was rumors they might announce perhaps a, uh, a new foldable phone. We'll keep an eye. If they do, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll jump. I'll go to their yeah, live. I bet they say video. something. Yeah. They should. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Paul was pointing out before the show began that Google posted a blog post just minutes ago saying talking about how foldable phones UIs should work yeah. with Android. So that sounds to me like they know something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. But uh, I will keep an eye on the uh, on the event. And, uh, if anything happens, I'll let you know. So, anything exciting to talk about today? No, but we do have several other things we can talk about. <laughs> we have some non-exciting things. Yeah, non -exciting it's, it's been things. that kind of week. Yeah, that's all right. You know, you do your best. Mm -hmm. you, you can't yeah, always control. You have to control. go to war with the army you got, you know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> that's right. So let's, let's kick things off with um, Javier Soltero. Who's that, Mary Jo? Yeah, Javier Soltero is... The guy Microsoft acquired when they acquired Accompli. Remember oh, that? Yeah. Four years ago. Love Accompli. Yep. Right. Everyone loved Accompli. And so Microsoft bought the company. They turned that into Outlook Mobile. And this guy got promoted through the ranks at Microsoft. He he was like on the short list of kind of high profile favorites of Satya Nadella. And everybody's like, oh, he's going places. So yeah, in March is. this year, he yeah. was. He is going places. Yep. <laughs> Not what we thought, though. Um, <laughs> in March this year, they made him the head of Cortana. And I think they were kind of hoping, you know, lightning could strike twice. And he did such a great job with Outlook Mobile that maybe he could save Cortana, too. And then yesterday, he... Uh, publicly told people inside Microsoft that he was going to leave the company by the end of this calendar year. Uh, guess who vested? I was yeah. just going to say that. I, I, I guess his stock uh, vesting was for, on a four-year plan, was it? <laughs> guess who vested was it? Well, I hope he But, you know, it might be the case that, yes, he vested. It might be the case that he saw what they were going to do with Cortana, and he was like, yeah, I'm not really that interested yeah. in doing that, yeah. you know, yeah, right. because originally, you know, Cortana was going to be like Siri, like Alexa, standalone, um, personal digital assistant, kind of the future wave of AI at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And then last month we found out they, they moved Cortana from the AI and research team into the organization that's responsible for Office 365. So that 
basically confirmed what we had been thinking that Cortana is going to become more of an embedded feature of Office, basically, than it is going to be a, a standalone personal digital assistant that's going to compete head to head with the others. So he may have just said, yeah, I'm not, not, not that, that interested. Yeah. <laughs> how, how long ago did he take over Cortana? When was that? March. March. Yep, March this year. So it's funny because as we were watching the Samsung event, they announced that they're going to put $22 billion into AI. They're hiring 1,000 mm -hmm. uh, data scientists. Yep. They, they opened up Bixby to third-party developers. I mean, they're, Samsung's mm -hmm. going the exact opposite direction. They're making they Bixby be part of everything. It's their, almost a backbone to their, mm -hmm. to their strategy. Well, is they that, might is be going in the same Well, but I wonder direction. if Microsoft's saying, okay, we don't want to compete. We want to cooperate. I don't. I know yeah. Microsoft would love to compete. I, I think this the, it's just the classic issue from Cortana's beginnings. It's just not mm -hmm. attached to anything that helps it gain mass acceptance. You know, right. Samsung they don't sells have a phone. tens of yeah. yeah. <laughs> Samsung sells so many phones, and Bixby is just it's built in. You can't replace it really. It's got its own button. Um, it, yeah, it has its own hardware button. It's kind of hard to beat that. You know, Siri has yeah. the same thing on the Apple devices. Um, it's just a Microsoft just doesn't have a way to compete with that. And yeah. although you, you know, look uh, at what Google. Samsung's doing, I mean, it's 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 not just the phone they're putting in their TVs, they're putting it in refrigerators, they're putting yeah, it. In, right. I guess right. Yeah. I guess Microsoft doesn't make TVs or refrigerators either. So maybe uh, don't give yeah. them ideas, Leo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them, but they're they're trying to ally yeah. themselves with people who make them. To sure. and for a while they were really trying to get everybody to put Cortana in everything, like in cars and refrigerators and right. everything. And then that that just kind of fell away a, a little before the time that they announced they were doing that partnership with Amazon. Echo. See, I wonder right. if their echo if their echo strategy is what they want to do with yeah. Bixby and everybody else and Siri mm -hmm. and, and Google is just kind of be the yeah, intermediary I, to those. I feel like I you know years from now maybe that we'll find out the chicken and the egg on this stuff, but. You know, Cortana kind of failed on a, a number of levels, and one of them was just the acceptance factor. Um, but, and and I mean that with uh, partners too. It's not just with consumers. Like we, we right. didn't see a lot of companies adopting uh, the, the technology, yeah. like Mary Jo just said. But yeah. the, the other half of this, and it's important to really remember this, is they did very little to advance Cortana as a viable assistant compared to the market leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always been behind. It's always been a year or two behind certain features. And um, you know, I don't know who to blame. I'm not, it, it, you know, it's, it, or whether it even makes sense to blame a person or a thing. I, you know, I'm not really yeah. sure, but these things kind of together, I think, contributed to the situation we have today. Yeah. I mean, they came out with a skills kit and they they came out with it late. It They originally were going to come yeah. out with it a few months earlier. But even after they came out with it, they only had a few hundred skills where Alexa already had like what? Like 50, multiple thousands or thousands. Or yeah. thousands yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, tens so of thousands, I, yeah. I feel like I feel like at the beginning they were kind of at the same level as everyone, and then they just fell way behind. And part of it is the phone for sure, like not having a phone. Uh, that was huge. Yeah, not having a phone is was killer for sure. Um, it was. I don't know. Even the skills thing, I don't feel like that was all that uh, nipping the heels of anybody. I mean, uh, you know, Microsoft didn't come. Uh, Microsoft, when did Cortana come out with Windows Phone Eight in two thousand twelve yeah. or something? Years I mean, ago. Yeah. Uh, many, many years ago. Um, it, the, the uptick has just always been slow. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. the way it's gone. But for a while, it did look like they were all in, like they were integrating it everywhere. Remember, there was like, yeah. they were going to have it in Dynamics, they were going to have it here, there. It was like going to be everywhere. And then it, you kind of stopped gonna be hearing listening. about that. We're never going to stop hearing it in Windows Setup. You right. know, this, woman, this woman's voice is skidding and scatting across, telling us about stuff nobody wants. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you know, you, you, to turn yeah. it off, you have to know to click a picture yeah. of a microphone, which has nothing to do with volume. It, it's right. crazy. And I, the, what, I, 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 I want, one thing I do want to make clear to people, because I saw some headlines yesterday when this happened. They're like, oh, that means that's it. They're dumping Cortana. Nope, they're not, actually. But they're changing what it is, and they're changing how they're going at the problem. So, you know, I think we'll still keep hearing about it, and it'll get integrated into all things Office. It'll get into you know, to do, it'll get into all these Microsoft products um, that are more on the productivity and task completion side, for sure. Um, I, there still could be more devices with it built in coming from OEMs and maybe even from Microsoft, who knows. Um, 
I, I feel like I feel like it's not going to go away. They've they've got two guys now who are going to run it underneath Rajesh Jha. So Rajesh Jha is the guy who runs um, experiences and devices at Microsoft. So he runs Surface, he runs Office, he runs Microsoft 365, the Windows experiences stuff. Like he's in charge of all that. And now he has this too. And he's got two guys he's putting in charge of it, I hear, through the grapevine. And one of them is the guy who's been in charge of Cortana Engineering all along. His name is Andrew Schumann. The other guy is, let me look it up because somebody told me this, um, Nit Nitin Agrawal, who is a distinguished engineer at Microsoft, who has a lot of experience in search and uh, natural language processing, deep learning. So they're definitely going to keep this around and they're going to make it part of their AI strategy. It's not going to just be like, eh, and that's the end of it. But it's not going to be a consumer oh, yeah. no, no, no. It, I, much, right? it shouldn't go away. I mean, <laughs> no, in, in shouldn't. the same sense that Samsung wants to get its stuff across all of its products, mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, putting it into the same group that does the Microsoft 365 makes sense because you do want this across all those products, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I, hear, but, uh, I hear Cortana is going to become the new Skype lady. <laughs> well, the the problem, I mean, the, the problem, there is no the problem. There are lots of problems. But as far as, you know, consumer acceptance and so forth, I think this battle is over. Uh, PC makers are embracing Alexa. I just got an Intel NUC. The new version has Farfield microphones built into the oh, sides of it. And they specifically really? call it the fact that they're going to sell these things with Alexa. That's what it's for. Yeah. It will probably work mm -hmm. with Cortana. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, consumers really have kind of spoke. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just the way it's gone. I mean, I, I the uh, the link up with Amazon on Alexa may very well just be a pragmatic move on Microsoft's part to, uh, you know, basically acknowledge that that's mm -hmm. the you know the consumer play they can do in the same way that they can kind of embrace Android and extend the ecosystem in the way that they can on iOS. Um, they can't really break it. They can't get into a Google Assistant. You it's know, smart for them to cut bait now and just say, look, we could see the writing on the wall. It, it does well, feel like that. Well, as a consumer product, but like Mary Jo right, said, I, I, I think product. this thing is still... There's app, uh, applications for it, yes. Well, they have, look, they, Microsoft has actually probably decades of voice recognition experience. They have, they are still one of the handful of companies who has any kind of AI expertise to, that can actually make something like this that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. I, the idea, the, or the goal should be, you know, how do we get this into the products that make the most sense and to the customer bases that make the most sense, primarily the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I'm sure that's what they're working on. I'm sure that's the point of yeah, why uh, Avier didn't want to stay. I, I mean, yeah. He wasn't interested yeah. in being another cog in that giant wheel. Right now at uh, the Samsung uh, developers event, they're talking about how good their screen technology is and how far it's come. And I'm thinking, would you say that their screen technology is flexible? Uh, I'm thinking they might they might be talking uh, along that lines. They're selling how well the Galaxy Note did, despite people laughing at the size of the phone. Uh, and as an uh, early Note adapter, I can. I can absolutely testify. That's, sure. People always mocked me when I whipped out my note, but uh, now everybody has giant fabrics. When you slap that iPad on the side of your head to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I feel like they're leading up to talking about their OLED yeah. technologies, that they're leading up to something here. So let's just listen in real quickly. The box, literally. This, this is space, Hassan Ajam, so we could, we could just find who's inside. a product uh, marketing guy. I think I have too many open. Let me close one of the windows here. Oh, oh! They're using white gloves. You know what that means? What? I don't know. They don't want to. They don't want to get dusty. <laughs> the president of Samsung's going to drive up in his thirty-seven Rolls Royce. <laughs> Earlier, uh, the uh, one of the Bixby guys, who was actually one of the early um, developers of Siri, did a did a fun thing. He uh, he did a magic trick. So you're probably noticing a trend here. All right, here hmm. we go. Yet again, we set the standard for smartphone design. This time with Infinity Display. Infinity display. So why do, we dis uh, why do we obsess about display innovation? Because it matters to you, Can our consumers. See this, uh, the screen? And that means yeah, it matters to us. So we're going to keep going. Oh. The bezels are going <laughs> to shrink even further. We're going to push the limits with our new lineup. I don't think lineup, they can. The Infinity UV. Our current screens displays. stink. <laughs> These are new concepts that are just right around the corner, and I can't mm. wait to tell you more about them. Infinity. Infinity AMOLED, Edge, and Infinity Display. Our breakthroughs have set the tone for the industry. 
And not only that, they've led to entirely new ways Simpsons of how folks really are using good at their dragging smartphones. this stuff out, I have to point out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We've turned the industry upside down in the past. Now we're going to turn it inside out. Today. <laughs> now we're oh. going to fold it in half. I'm so excited <laughs> yep. about our next breakthrough. The foldable display. There it is. And to tell you, you more about it, here's Justin Dennison. Here's Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> SVP of mobile product Thank marketing you. at Thanks Samsung. It makes me proud when I think of all the industry leading displays. All right. There's going to be a lot of crap for a while. I'll, po I, I, I'll, uh, I'll let you go on, and then if they actually show something, we can go back to it. Unless you want, unless you want to watch. Well, you know, we, maybe we should talk, since this is Windows Weekly, about why we care about yes. the full thing. Yeah. Right? That Project Andromeda, um, right? Project Andromeda was supposed to be a foldable phone-like device. And as we know, Microsoft's put it on hold, maybe permanently. It may never come out from the Surface team. But they are still doing things inside the operating system we keep hearing that would support foldable devices or flexible devices or, or devices with mm -hmm. dual screens. So we think even if they never come out with the thing that we all thought was going to be this Andromeda device, They'll still have support for OEMs who might build these kinds of things in Windows 10, and they themselves may someday have some kind of a successor to Andromeda. So now they're talking about how they can bend the screen around, and of course they do that starting with the S6, and all the Samsung phones now have kind of curved OLED screens uh, right. that go around the edge. But they're not alone in this. Pretty much everybody else is doing it too. That, that music usually means either it's time to get visibly comfortable or... <laughs> or <laughs> You're really burned by this phrase. Yeah. It seems what happened to be to you? An, an infelicitous translation from Korean. I it think. does. <laughs> be visibly Put on your white gloves. Yeah. <laughs> be visibly... Please enter this train cabin and be visibly comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Today is yep. a big wow. milestone. And I'm sure you're all wondering what it looks like in real life and how it works. Well, I want to know more. <laughs> Here it is. He's pulling something out of his pocket. Oh, my God. It's the big it's reveal. He's got a gun. Oh, it's they a... turned yeah, out all the lights. <laughs> it's really thick. When it's open. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's a remote it's clicker. It's a tablet. Okay, so there it Offering is. A big screen. So there's a screen there. on the front, which looks Thank like you. a phone, except that it's a phone that's about triple thick because it also yeah. opens up to a single screen. It's gorgeous. Which is... When closed? Uh, what do you think the dimensions are of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a phone that fits neatly inside your pocket. Well. <laughs> and, and Thank it's, you. It's and, a and that's dry it. eraser. Ladies that, and gentlemen, uh, that's it. That's all there is. We're done. <laughs> no, of he, course, I'd get in trouble he's, he's if I showed out. you everything today. Yeah. So we've disguised the elements of the design. But trust me, there's a device inside here. Or right, maybe that's why it, it looks so ugly. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Infinity it's not an Flex Amazon device. Represents an entirely <laughs> new mobile platform. All right, I think that's enough uh, from them. Uh, but uh, there you go. They mm. did announce uh, a phone, and I gather it'll be available next year. So that's why Google is uh, responding to that. Yeah, that's what Google apparently says somewhere. I didn't see it myself, but yeah. supposedly they said that uh, Samsung would ship this in 2019. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Speaking of things that will ship in 2019, what's going on with Windows 10 version 1809? <laughs> My first ever segue, ladies is and gentlemen. Is it out? Is it out? Is it out? Is it out? No. Are we there it's yet? Are we there no. yet? No. Still not there yet. No. Yep. Are there more showstoppers? We haven't heard of any this week, right? No new ones. Have we haven't heard anything this week. I mean, how do we, how no, we, we know? literally have heard nothing it's, this week about it. Yeah, the absence of sound is uh, pretty much <laughs> the theme of this release. Yeah. Um, so 1809, which was uh, scheduled to come out in September, mm -hmm. um, came out in October for one brief shining moment. Then it turned yep, out... The good old days. The good old days, we call them. Turned out... Over it, a month ago, by it, the way. It, it, yeah, yeah. Deleted uh, some files and some unusual edge cases. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was another bug that was less unusual uh, with file deletion and zip files. Yep. They yanked it so, By the way, they fixed both of them. They fixed those. Yep. And the insiders mm -hmm. build, they're fixed. Yep. Yep. So if you're an insider, you have, in fact, I have uh, 1809 on 
my Lenovo, and you know, it was. I think three, it's fixed your, for you. Your computer hasn't also. crashed into a wall or something. Nothing, like, <laughs> I think nothing terrible has happened. But then I'm not. Great. I'm not doing those things. So <laughs> yes. So I don't. Know. And I think they did fix it for people who did manage to get it because yeah. they rolled out yeah, a yeah, cumulative yeah. update, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll do what we do every we, every week, which is say, you know, Tuesday just happened and we kind of thought it might have been Tuesday. And then, well, Friday's coming and you never know. But <laughs> next Tuesday, of course, is Patch Tuesday. Uh -huh. And yeah. it seems like that. kind of an obvious yeah. time to release a, a, a version right. of Windows 10 that was uh, code complete or feature complete in August. It was uh, finalized in September, was released in October. Pulled and, in October. Um, is still not available. <laughs> yes, so uh, it's just yikes. yeah. Okay, and you know a lot of people have been asking Paul and I on Twitter. They're like, okay, if you guys are under NDA, can you just say you know when it's coming or something? We ear. don't know. Just tug your We ear. don't know. We're not under NDA. <laughs> they have literally talked to nobody. This is my problem with this. It's not the delay, which is embarrassing and bad. It's that they're not saying anything at all. It's it's been several weeks now. I think three weeks. Since they've said anything about this build. In that time period, I believe they released four new builds of the next version of Windows 10. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I just, and I feel very strongly yeah, I, about this topic. You know, you got to be transparent well, here. I know. And I had somebody ask me today a real question. They're like, so do you think they're just going to skip 1809 and go on to 19H1? <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm like, no, I think it's going to be Patch Tuesday. But you know what? If it isn't, you got to actually start thinking they've got to say something because where is it? <laughs> you know? Oh, can you imagine? Next Tuesday goes by without any thing. <laughs> I don't I, I, I guess our world's going to implode. I'm, th I'm thinking that they think by not saying anything, they're kind of just keeping this out of the view of normal users. And mm -hmm. it's like nothing to see here, guys, you know? Well, <laughs> And normal and users, as that. we talked about last week, probably aren't even, you know, they're not tapping their fingers waiting. No, I don't, they don't think care. so. No. Yep. No. They don't even know. No. Sure. But the people who do know um, are like, hey, wh where is it? You know, like, I know what do they know, know that we don't that know? They know. <laughs> right. That we know. Uh, yeah. yeah. We oh, know what you know. <laughs> But I see I uh, the UPS man has arrived. Oh, my God. What happened? There's Santa. a giant pile of boxes in front of me. Santa came early. These must be Apple <laughs> watch bands. No, no. Those are the pencils. Should I open just uh, anything? Should I just wait? <laughs> this is Windows Weekly, and this these all seem to be from a company named AI. Right. Artificial intelligence? Hmm. Who's that? Maybe it's from Cortana. <laughs> Could be. She sent you a little package. <laughs> this isn't all of them, by the way. Well, Lisa's already taken hers. So uh, go yeah, ahead, Paul. What were you saying? <laughs> I know, I know. Where is he? Where's Waldo? <laughs> I feel like Apple has taken over the world. <laughs> you know, I'm actually a little uh, not happy with Apple these days a little bit. <laughs> Not to really? mention the fact that they just oh, because of the phrase. bent my uh, credit card in half. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they took us uh, our Twit Live down because we had the temerity to uh, comment, right. to rebroadcast mm -hmm. their event. So, um, hey, Leo, yeah. buddy. What? Um, is that in the, is, are those in the, <laughs> you having a hard time? You having a hard time seeing there? I Paul? can't see his eyes. <laughs> oh, I I'm sorry. I feel like I'm Let choking on cardboard off. here. There, now, there you go. Little, now you can now see Now we can his see him. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll get him out of your way. I shouldn't. Uh... It's like the um, what's that thing with the eyes over the um, with the nose? Um, big, uh, Mr. Potato Head. I, I get big, I get no. I have Bixby in my head. It's uh, Kilroy was here. Kilroy was here. Yeah. <laughs> is that what Kil is that what it is? Yeah, Kilroy was here. It was the yeah. it was the uh, GI graffiti during World War II. Yeah, they draw the little head, the fingers, mm -hmm. the nose, and uh, yeah, memory lane. Do you want to see? I have uh, a pencil. Do you want to see a pencil? I got this no. specially. No, Leo. Engraved. See, uh, let me let me show you something. Yeah. This is a surface pen. It's had a flat <laughs> side for a long time. See that? It also, by the way, magnets. It has magnets. Yeah. Oh, it wow. doesn't roll on a table. Yeah, it's, but it's, yours. <laughs> uh, does yours? Let's see. Charge when it's magnetically attached. No, Leo. Ours doesn't need to be charged. It oh. works for a really long time. Oh, <laughs> it does. Uh, oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, I know what yeah. yours doesn't have. 
Yours doesn't have. It's not white. It's it doesn't have the special engraved message. No, it doesn't have an eraser though. In the end, yeah, that's kind no, of a ours, neat feature. Ours, look at it says. It's also a little clickable button. Dream girl. Oh yikes! <laughs> what? It's, a, it's an inside joke. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you actually get that engraved? You can get that engraved. Yeah, but it's really oh, tiny. Boy. Dream. You can't even really see it. Dream girl. But this way, <laughs> I got mine. Says this is for Megan. Mine says Dream mm -hmm. Boy. It's a long story. Uh, it has to do with the keynote and all that, so I won't belabor it. Is there any other Windows news? Yeah. Let me take a break. Actually, you know what? This would be a good time so that you guys can go uh, be nauseous uh, on your own time. I will <laughs> I will take a break. And we'll I understand come back. the excitement of the day, Leo. No, no. I'm, I'm not. No, you know what? I just, that's it. That's all I'm going to open today. Every day, it's going to be like all I needed the to see advent was calendar. Pencil. Every day, I'll Each open another day, box from one Apple box. Until, Christmas, <laughs> until Christmas Day. Yeah. Be very exciting. Oh, you want to compare them? Yeah, yours is smaller and nicer, to be honest. That's all right. I don't want to compare them. I'm going to do an ad, and we'll come back. More of Mary Jo and Paul Thorat. No more of Apple. Okay. Oh, actually, we do have an Apple thing later in the Oh, notes. crap. <laughs> so we will have Sorry. more Windows 10 in a moment. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. You know, when I bought all this stuff from Apple, I had to take out a home loan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest check I've ever written. No, I didn't. But it is that loan, that home loan. That is a big deal when you're buying a house, man. That is a scary moment when you write that down payment check and you're on the hook for all that money. And it's like, wow. It's the most. It's one of the most important purchases you'll ever make, too, because this is where you and your family are going to live for a long time. Rocket Mortgage wants to take some of the anxiety out of it by making the home loan process nice, friendly, easy. Designed to fit you and your needs. That's how Rocket Mortgage got to be number one in customer satisfaction. Eight years in a row, according to J.D. Power. They're also number one in volume as of December, which is great. That just shows good guys can win. Uh, not the big bank. That's, that's who they eclipsed. That's who we got our loan from five years ago. I'm not bitter, but it did. we applied in August. We didn't get into the house until October because the bank just took so darn long more than two months to process our loan, and they kept coming back and saying, well, now we need this document and that document. We were faxing stuff from vacation. We had to enlist the support of Debbie's sister to find documents and fax. It was crazy. Next time, I promise you, Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage, the entirely online mortgage approval process. You could do the whole thing on your computer. You could do the whole thing on your phone. You could do it in an open house. It's a three-step process. It's fast. It's easy. There's no big application, no trip to the bank or a lender. You do it all at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And the step one, it's called the power buying process. Step one, you answer a few simple questions. You don't even have to do research, you know, your name, address, birth date, social security number, that kind of thing. They will then do a credit check on you and say, this is these are the loans you qualify for. You choose the term, the down payment, the rate, and you're in. That's called pre-qualified approval. That took less than 10 minutes. Not two months, 10 minutes. Then... Over the next 24 hours, a loan officer will verify income, assets, and credit, and they'll do it in most cases without your help at all. They can have, they have trusted relationships with all the financial institutions. They can get everything they need. And within 24 hours, they'll give you verified approval. Now that, you even get a button that says print the letter. You can print out a letter. You can give to your realtor or, better yet, to the person whose house you want to buy. It says they're good for it. You get the, you're the strength of a cash buyer right there on that letter. They're good for it. They got the loan. They got the money. Give them the house. Come on. There's no contingency. That's huge. When we were home hunting five years ago, we didn't the house we really wanted, we didn't get. Because we put in an offer and everything. But, you know, as in those days, the offer was, well, as long as the bank with the stagecoach and the whips gives us the money, we'll buy this house. It was called a contingency offer. That's most of the time what you do. Somebody comes along with cash, takes it right out from under us. Because if you're the seller, who are you going to go with? That's why this verified approval is so important. The seller looks at you and goes, ah, no contingency, they're good for it. But then step three comes, and this is something that's unique to, the, to this particular time. 
uh, interest rates hadn't been going up for a while, but they are now. They're they're ticking up, and that means as you shop for a house, there's always this pressure, this anxiety that the rates are going to go up. So that's when the rate. Once you get the verified approval, you qualify for the all new exclusive Rate Shield approval. This is step three. They lock the rate. Say that loan. We will not raise the rate. Rates can go up. We will not raise your rate. You have up to 90 days to shop. You can. You don't have to worry. Your rate's not going to go up. If rates go down, your rate will go down. That's nice, but they can't go up. It's exactly what makes Rocket Mortgage and Quicken Loans the number one lender in the country. Customer satisfaction. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, and MLSConsumerAccess.org number 3030. Here's what you do. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. We thank them for making Windows Weekly a reality. You know what I got here, by the way? I didn't, I didn't show you this. I got a loaner from Huawei. Yeah. This is the Mate Book 10 oh, Pro nice. or X Pro. Oh, that's I never, a beautiful. It is, this is what Apple should have done. Yep. And the reason I asked for the loaner is because you know I got this new MacBook Air. I want to compare. This mm -hmm. is this is there's a only of one problem with that device, and it's a little pop up camera on the keyboard. Right but there. other than yeah. that, this is almost the perfect laptop. I agree. It feels it's good. This got a very nice keyboard, touch screen, beautiful. Yep. Ed, look how look how edge to edge that bezel is. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's incredible. There's very little yep. bezel. That's why you have to put the camera in here sure. because there's nowhere to put it yeah right yeah yeah yep <laughs> but uh, although that will change right i mean over time they should, you know they'll they could, probably be able to embed it right in the you think a notch yeah, or well you could do a notch yeah um, <laughs> pop -up thing. exactly where you know where it should be mm -hmm. speakers it sounds good the all there's a couple of little things that are a little weird the fan blows this way yeah. right in your face mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's nice for those cold winter nights, you know. It's a, <laughs> but it's it, is a a, it is a real processor. It's a U processor, not this weird Y thing that Apple's using. Uh, yeah. I just feel like that's what the, that's what the uh, MacBook Air could have been. Instead, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apple didn't really innovate. They just kind of said, "Well, for you guys who like it, bloviate. here's another one." Yeah. So innovate, bloviate. bloviate. What's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> I think all the innovations happening on the Windows side now. There's no question in my mind. Crazy. Even that NUC you got, Paul, probably is better than yeah. the, the, the Mac Mini. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right? I, I, I mean, the basic story hasn't changed in two years since I, you know, I did the first NUC that I did. Obviously, you benefit from the processor generations. Um, it's a U-series chip, but they run it at a higher at 28 watts as opposed to 15. So it actually allows the thing to run at higher sustained speeds. Uh, and, you know, obviously, there's a fan and a, a cooler. But... Um, it's it's just kind of amazing. It has those far field microphones, like I said earlier, and then um, because of Thunderbolt three, you could do and of course you could do this on a Mac Mini too. But uh, you could connect it to a Thunderbolt hub, which I have an awesome one from HP. You could connect it to an external GPU and turn it into a little gaming PC. Um, it's it, it's super versatile. Oh well, it's also only five hundred bucks. But you know, yeah. don't let that <laughs> stop. <laughs> Don't let that bother you. <clears throat> I don't want that bother me. Um, moving right along. Uh, there is other Windows news. Mm -hmm. There's a new build today. Yeah. It doesn't seem like... I mean, nowadays, there's so many builds so often, it doesn't seem like uh, yeah. breaking news. Let's put it that way. Also, what's news. coming out still is just very incremental stuff in these builds, right? I mean, is there's it, no is this way. For it's all Q1, good. I mean, I, is this for 19H1? Yeah. 19H1, yeah. 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 It's in keeping, I would say, with the past two releases, right? There's some nice fit and finish yeah. stuff going on. We're, we're mm -hmm. in a, an embarrassing phase with Windows in some ways where they're they're kind of bringing back features we used to have. You know, they're, they're mm -hmm. still working on, like, making high DPI better, uh, making uh, the ability to change text size, you know, like we used to have back in, I don't know, XP or something. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so we have some of that stuff going on, but, uh, I, I'm not complaining. I, the truth is I this is the kind of thing I think windows does benefit from, and this is the fit and finish yeah. work that I think Microsoft often doesn't undertake. So it's, it's, it's actually good to see this kind of thing. Yeah, it is. There's nothing huge to call out though. There's a preview of new emoji though. That's something <laughs> you might want to call out. 
Well, we yeah. all get new emojis. Thanks Surprised to I the forgot that. Emoji Committee of the Unicode mm-hmm. Consortium. <laughs> yeah, the Star Chamber, as we call it now. Doing the good work once again. Red yeah, lobster. there's like there's mostly just lobster. like <laughs> settings, like settings tweaks. You know, like focus assist now will automatically turn on if you are running any app in full screen, so that you won't be disturbed yep. because you're all absorbed in the app. Sure. Um, so yeah, like kind of small things. A slider in the activity center for brightness. Yeah. yeah, that display uh, blurring, uh, non-blurring, I guess the, the fix for display yeah. blurring on certain apps is just going to be on by default, as it should be. So that's smart. It's good. You know. Yep. Yeah, it's all good stuff. Yeah, but, Except this, for the but does the box look like this? Uh, no. <laughs> Dude, that looks, what is that? That's like psychedelic vomit. What am I, what is? <laughs> um, yeah, I think it is. It's you might want to see a doctor if that's what comes out. Spinal Tap album. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Is that wild? Is that a cover? Keyboard cover? <laughs> no, no. This is the iPad Pro box. How come it looks so weird? Uh, how come it looks so <laughs> weird, says Mary Jo Foley. Clearly a biased member of the press. Mm-hmm. Clearly fake news. Look at news. those bezels. How you know, compared that? to that uh, Huawei machine you were just showing. They're giant. But you know what the Huawei machine doesn't have that this has? A pencil. Curved corners. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. The, they, really that, made, he, they acted like they had I know. Solved, cured cancer. You notice mm-hmm. the corners. Yeah. Are we finally achieved the corner that Steve Jobs wanted because he was so into <laughs> rounded rectangles. And it's the precise angle that he specified. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it is. In his <laughs> will, he said, thou shalt I, I just want to point out, looking at that photo, the angle of the screen corners does not look the same it's as the device the corners, which I believe is something they pointed out was happening. Okay, well, maybe the picture's mm-hmm. wrong, although that would seem odd. Right, but you see that you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's It doesn't it's seem like it's curve. the same. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> okay, I'm going to play Santa Claus and bring this down the hall to uh, Megan while you guys <laughs> blather okay. on about Windows. Go ahead. Just All right, keep I'll going. I'll take one Just and then Mary Joe can take the next one. How's that sound? All right. Go for it. Um, Go for and outings, because be I didn't even write I about that. Yeah, I didn't either, so this is going to be brief. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, this appears to be the, a, a thing I've been kind of asking for, and I, I think this is one of the rare uh, applications for Windows Mixed Reality or any kind of uh, Mixed Reality slash uh, VR type headset like the, the Google stuff or whatever that I think makes some sense. And it's mm-hmm. a way to uh, virtually view, in this case, kind of like tourist locations around the world, right? So... It's a virtual tour of different places. And I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, yeah. You know, I, some people just don't have the the means or the desire to undergo the travel to see places. And, and yep. if something like this can bring that to them, I, I I don't think it's lazy in any way. I think it's wonderful. I think this is kind of a neat thing. So, so it's potentially So it's an cool. app, right? It's an app called Outings. Is that right? Yeah, Microsoft Outings uh, for Windows Mixed Reality. And it's, yeah, you can see, you, you know, cities like uh, Seattle and Chicago, New York, mm-hmm. whatever. And then uh, they have locations within those cities. And it's just a way to, uh, I guess this was previously, cool. interestingly, this was also available on Android and iOS. But now it's available mm-hmm. on Windows Mixed Reality. Is this a garage app, do you know? <laughs> or yeah, it is. Just it is. something. It is. Yep. Yeah. Microsoft Outings. Yep. It's good. Well, the name maybe is a little ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> it's a little strange. I, 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 strange uh, choice. It's hard to find good brand names probably yes. now. All the good names are you know, taken. Just, dot com. Yeah. yeah, like all the good domains have been taken. Yeah. Um, hmm. The Surface Go... Which I yeah. have to admit. Now, you, you, Mary Jo, did you get one? I can't remember. Yep, I did. I bought one do and I kept it. it. Um, you know, I do use it. I take it with me when I go somewhere and I think I might possibly need to edit or write something and I don't want to carry the whole laptop. It is nice and light, I have to admit. It is. Yeah. Yep. However, yeah, so originally when, when so they announced sluggish. it. I just. Yeah, yeah, it's sluggish. It is sluggish. But um, what I did was I took it out of um, Windows 10 S and no, Windows 10 Home in S mode, and I moved it to plain old Windows 10 Home, and then I put Chrome on it, and I like it much better. Yeah. Aha! Uh-huh. That's the key. And now they're selling this slightly, uh, is this, 
Why are there t-shirts on your website, Mary Jo? <laughs> I thought Who at knows? first Paul Thorat was doing the graphics for I you. But no, that's an ad. Because yeah. Surface Go is a dog. Get it? Actually, I want this. <laughs> I think this is good. I'm going to buy this so that ZD keeps Mary Jo employed. Thanks. From Clothing Monster, <laughs> dog t-shirts. <laughs> Um, so is this a lower end or a higher end variant of the Surface Go? Um, so it's kind of right in the middle. Um, yep. there, when, when they introduced Surface Go, there were two models. There was the 4 gig RAM, 64 gig of eMMC storage one that was 399 Then they had the higher end one, which I bought, 8 gig of RAM, 128 gig of SSD storage that was 549 So now they have the one that's in the middle, which is four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage at 499 starting at 499 without the keyboard. Yeah. Um, and this is, interestingly, this model was sold by Costco exclusively when the Surface Go was announced. Right. And um, you couldn't get it from Microsoft, but as of this week, or I guess it was actually last week, you can now buy this model from Microsoft directly. I feel like you'd be better off with the RAM than the storage, you know, that the big, you do. well, yeah. the process is terrible. I never but store anything that, on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you could really benefit from having the extra RAM on, on True. such a low end device. Yeah. You don't, and you can just store yeah. in the cloud. Right. right? It's like, yeah. Yeah. So 128 is plenty. It is. I feel like would it's be plenty. plenty probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would. Yeah. But eight gigs would be of RAM would be very nice. Mm -hmm. Just want to point out that they're only charging fifty dollars for both of those uh, upgrades. And um, you know what does Apple charge oh for? Oh my uh, God! You don't even. Know. <laughs> the, the trick with for RAM and storage upgrades. Yeah, does anyone know? The trick know? with buying Apple stuff is never to think about the price. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny That's you say trickle, that because right? I um I bought a MacBook Air and my wife asked me about the price. Oh Lord! And um, we did not have a good conversation. It's outrageous. <laughs> this uh, this mate with an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig hard drive, I think it's sixteen ninety nine. Yeah. A similar. You know what you get for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is seven. I paid seventeen ninety nine for the uh, two for the mm -hmm. uh, MacBook Air. Sure. With a you know a Y processor. Um, I don't know. It will uh, be, know, we'll see. It will be we'll fine. See. Mine's gold though. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. There's a, there is now a pile of empty boxes <laughs> <laughs> off camera. Do you want to see this? Just, just not yeah, really. Come on. <laughs> what color did you get, Paul? What's that? What color did you get? Oh, I got a normal manly color, Leo. I got uh, <laughs> space gray. Space I gray. I think they call it. What are you, an astronaut? I, you know, I. I like the normal Can, colors. I don't know. Yeah, no, I know. What is? Is it rose gold or gold? No, they, no it's just gold. Does it look I like, like is it a copper gold, gold or a bronze gold? I don't know. What do you is it brushed brass? <laughs> yes, yeah, gold exactly. Gold. It's, it looks like it's made out of solid twenty-four karat. <laughs> the most. Oh well, that would explain gold. the price. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. You know, I have to say, it, it's it's. Uh, it's got screws on the bottom. It's similar it's nice. in many ways <laughs> to this mate. Uh, we'll, we'll do a head-to-head -head comparison. But, uh, you know, the mate has a better keyboard, I can tell you. What, one of the things yeah. I do like, however, about the Mac is that they got rid of, at least on this, they got rid of that lame touch bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That thing is such it's a actually place. the best thing about this uh, device, that they have Touch ID and not the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah much like... A Huawei. Who's, whose name will never be spoken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's, it, you know what? It's, it's a nostalgia play. It's like buying a uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah. It reminds me of That's 2000. That's why I bought a new Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Reminds me of the good old days when... Oh, it's doing, it's doing the thing that Windows does too, which talks to you if you don't... Uh, oh, no, geez, is it well, really? because you didn't respond to it long enough yeah, or quickly I don't enough. I like the talking. The one, thing I, the one thing that's really changed with mobile devices, this is not just an Apple thing, although it's really prominent on Apple devices too, is the number of steps you have to go through when you first set up one of these devices is astronomical. And this is something that's kind of escalated over time. Yeah, yeah. Windows 10 is like three steps. It's just like the simplest thing in the world. Oh. It does talk to you too much. But, okay. Um, you know, Android, iOS. I wish you had this, though. The Mac, it takes a long time. Gold, the gold stickers, yeah. Gold apples. Gold mm -hmm. apples. 
Those will look mm -hmm. nice in the drawer with my other Apple stickers. Yeah, because I would never put that on anything. Apples. I know. <laughs> I'd like to advertise that I spend too much money on things. Maybe you want to break into my car. Put that in the window. Exactly. I yeah. see people do that and go, "Are you insane? Mm -hmm. yeah, Is that like the like tap here to break glass? Is that what that thing means? <laughs> yeah. Are you nuts? It, and and it's a strange kind of loyalty. It's like uh, it, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. you know putting your 49ers or your Patriots sticker in the car. It's, I'm it's on the team not, Apple. It, I don't think it is like that because. You know, I don't pay extra because I like the Patriots, right? It's not an Apple product. They, I, you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's, I, I don't know that there's anything quite like this, to be honest. I think it's like getting the Zoom tattoo on yourself. Oh, God. Remember that guy? Yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, I just saw that guy. I see that guy all the time. <laughs> you see him? I see him like once a year. Who is he? So do you. No. Do you see? I think he was so, at our meetup at Ignite. So do you know the true story about that guy? That guy isn't the Zoom guy. Wait, what? Oh, he's another guy? He's we, not the Zoom we, guy? He looks so much like the Zoom oh. guy, but it's not Why him. Why do I even talk to him? Why did you tell me that? No, no he's he, a good guy. Because he said to me at the, our last yeah, meetup, yeah. he goes, I know you guys always joke that I'm the Zoom guy, but you you know I'm not, right? That's amazing. I didn't know that. I thought he was the Zoom guy, but <laughs> it wasn't a joke. that's okay. We I still like him. Are. He's a good he's guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> Actually, uh, you could That's call. funny. I do feel bad for the Zoom guy. Yeah. He got that burned off, didn't he, that tattoo? Yeah, I don't think that's here's my they question. Did. Yeah, they, <laughs> they they did remove did it. Did this yeah. guy get this tattoo burned off? I gotta show you this guy. He's not Zoom uh -oh. guy. Is this an apple tattoo? No, a gold apple? It's actually maybe a little bit worse. It's a twit tattoo. Well, oh, wow. I'm trying to find this guy to see if he needs an intervention. This was 10 <laughs> years ago. He looks like he needs to eat some more. Yeah. I, yeah. It's well. That's the problem. Is I hope he doesn't get fat because that Twit logo is going to really stretch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So there's oh, worse nice. than a Zoom tattoo. You could get a Twit tattoo. I don't know that that is worse. I'll, I'll just point out that Twit is still around. Oh, that's a good point. Right. Yeah. We we outlived the Zoom. Yeah. Wow. I mean, a low, low bar. Low bar. But <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. That so should be not, your tagline for the site. Well, we did outlive we the did, zone. We survived the zone. <laughs> um, before I, I, let's see, I have another ad. I think I have to do another ad because somebody's got to okay. pay for all this Apple crap. Um, <laughs> or crapple, as some might say. Yep. So I thought I might talk to you a little bit about my belt. Can I show you? Are you Paul, do you wear belts? I do wear it. Well, not. I mean, I'm wearing shorts right now. But yes, when I wear pants, I wear you belts. wear belts? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and I think women maybe understand this too, but for guys especially, the belt is, I feels like sometimes maybe a medieval torture device. <laughs> it, never, it never quite, yep. you know, there's only a few holes. It never quite fits. It's a little yep. tight sometimes and a little loose other times. And I'm, I have to say, I've been told uh, in no uncertain words that I may not let my pants fall down anymore. It's just not, it's not okay. It's, it's prudent. Yeah. Yeah. It would be prudent. So this is my new slide belt. I love this. Actually, they mixed up the belts, but that's actually one of the things you can do with slide belt. That's so cool. So this is a twit belt buckle. Don't get a tattoo, get a twit belt buckle. <laughs> Why not? Right. They have, you can engrave them with anything you want. Slide belts come in a variety of belts. This is a um, vegan friendly leather. They have top grain animal hide they have which i have full grain leather um and so what happens is you get the belt separate from the buckle they're easy to interchange by the way so you can get you know a, a great buckle and a variety of belts when you get the belt it has measurements in here you can cut it to your rough waist size but i say rough because it doesn't have to be exact and i'll show you why it's the patented slide belt ratchet mechanism so i'm going to put the end in the buckle here and now I've got a slide belt. And see, these are the ratchets here, 32 of them. So really, no matter what, you know, your current girth, if I may say, the slide, <clears throat> belt, <clears throat> the slide belt is going to fit great. You slide it in here. This is the sound Lisa hears every morning as I'm getting dressed. Listen to this. <laughs> and I adjust it to just, you know, the most comfortable uh, size. And then maybe as the day goes on, I have a large meal or something. You just lift this and slide it out. It silently slides out, by the way. You don't. Nobody has to know you're letting it out. And you have so many ratchets. It can always fit just right. No more 
uncomfortable pants. Slide belts come in a variety of styles, uh, including canvas. Here's a canvas one that I really like. Actually, I call this the, the Cub Scout model. It's got a blue canvas belt and an antique brass buckle. Isn't that? That's kind of a grown-up Cub Scout model. But there's a whole variety of belts, unisex uh, belts, skinny belts for women, colorful belts for kids, and don't forget... The Survival belt, belt, belt Buckle from Slide Belts. This is Slide Belts by Brig Taylor. This is the only company that puts a knife in your belt <laughs> 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 that has a bottle opener, okay, and, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, and a flashlight. Not bring that through TSA. No. No. This, I think you probably shouldn't get this, take this on a, on a flight. It's got a flashlight and a fire starter. So it's really more for camping, I think, than it is for TSA travel. But it's a beautiful, look at that. Wouldn't that be a great groom's men's gift or, a, or hey, maybe a bride gift if if your bride likes to hike. This is the survival uh, belt from, <laughs> from Slide Belts by Big Taylor. I love this stuff. Coming soon, Slide Belt watches with the same swappable watch bands for customization. I love the idea that I can have a different, you know, keep my survival buckle on Stay away from me and have a different band, depending on my feeling of the day. And they also have some great gift sets. Uh, actually, if you click the gift, gift set tabs, you'll see some really good offers for this time of year. But I should point out that those sets, because they're already discounted, can't you can't take advantage of our offer code. For everything else, we've got a great offer code, 20% off your order when you use the offer code TWIT. 20% off your entire order. Slide belts offer, of course, a one-year warranty, free exchanges, no hassle returns. So you gift it with confidence. You know, if, you're, if your giftee wants to return it, no harm, no foul. It's okay. It's okay. You won't, though. Once you get this, if you're ready for a better belt, you're going to love your slide belts. These are so awesome, and what a great gift. Go to slidebelts.com slash twit, slidebelts.com slash twit, and use the offer code twit. As I said, at checkout, you get 20% off your order. Slidebelts.com slash twit. I think for yourself, get the survival belt. <laughs> or give it to the groom. He might need it. Slidebelts by Brig Taylor. <laughs> Go to slidebelts.com slash twit. Uh, all right. Now we can, now we can move on with... Some Apple news. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but this is not, from from my point of view, good news. It, we talked about when Microsoft's earnings came out a couple of weeks ago, we talked about this. And now Apple's going to do the same thing. And I really feel like this is doing Yeah, I'm, I mourn this. I, I yeah. wish there was some kind of legislation that would prevent companies from being able to do this. I, I don't understand why it's legal. and So I Apple's don't know no longer going to say how many units uh, uh, they've sold of anything. Yeah. They they weren't for a while breaking out things like iPads, but they, or I can't remember what they didn't break out. But now they're not going to break out. Much they like didn't Microsoft. break. They've never broken out uh, Apple TV sales, Apple Watch sales, Watch sales. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the primary three lines, uh, well, back in the day, iPod, and then eventually that stopped uh, when it got too small. Um, now, but I, iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Here's yeah. what their CFO Luca Mastri said, and you know maybe this makes a little sense. He says the nature of our business now. Mm -hmm. is really we're making money with return business and services. So we yep. think a more important metric is how much money we make per customer and how much money we make in services yeah. and less how many iPhones we sell. Of course, coincidentally, okay. iPhone sales growth were 0% this quarter. But let me explain why he's foolish. Okay. <laughs> so Please do. The, 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 the problem, be, here's the thing. Uh, one of the interesting things you can track with Apple right until now is um, you can see how much the average selling price of an iPhone is, which is one of the two primary ways. In fact, it's I, I will argue, uh, anyone would argue, it is the primary way they're going to be making more money per customer going forward is you charge them more up front for a phone. Dramatically more. And we can more. see Every that one the, the average price of uh, phones yeah. have gone up considerably. Th this metric uh, is um, something we can tell because we have the numbers it exists but over time what's happening is they have this other business called services and services has grown to a 10 billion dollar uh, by revenue business um, we don't have any insight at all into how that breaks down because they have various services they have uh, apple music they have icloud storage whatever it might be now um, compared to the iphone um, services is minuscule it's a tiny in fact i wrote something about that over the weekend it's it's still very tiny but 
you can still chart the change in Apple and you could look at something and, and you, it, this won't change with unit sales, but you could look at Apple and say, look, um, a year ago today, 70% uh, of their business by revenue was iPhone sales. They're the iPhone company. If you look at it today, it's about 59%, right? But if you add in that services, most of which probably are coming off of iPhone sales, uh, iPhone users, sorry, you could say, well, actually, it's 70, 79% or you know, whatever, 74%. Uh, they're still very much the iPhone company. If you provide both of these things over time, you still have this metric. So you could show, and I think it would be valuable to Apple and to its uh, uh, shareholders and to potential investors, that Apple as a business is evolving and that they are making more money, both from the sale of phones and from this new services business. And that's beneficial and transparent for everyone. There's no downside to it. Um, it's You could say, yeah, the iPhone sales are stagnant, but you know what? They're stagnant everywhere or down, so we're beating the market that way. We're selling more per phone. And oh, by the way, look at the services thing that's been growing. We're making more per customer in a number of different ways. This is a healthy, diversified business. And you can't say that if you stop showing the other thing. <laughs> all, you, all you can do now is point in isolation to this thing, which we're now comparing. We have no idea where anything comes from. And you say, well, you know, the services business grew by 20%. Okay. This is their commercial <laughs> but, cloud, right? This is their equivalent. Yeah, it's but that's sort of, the yeah. funny thing about services. Apple includes everything in services, including the eight or nine billion dollars that Google gives them, just mm -hmm. to be the search engine of Safari. Mm -hmm. That's not really so, sales. I mean, it's revenue. It's, it, it's it, it's something you could kind of point at and say it's money we make on the people who use our products. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why they I want to the, talk about Apple. That. Apple today. You know, you, you talk about business models. It's kind of really interesting. You know, Apple. Up until about a year ago, let's say, I think peak peak iPhone was uh, third quarter calendar quarter of 2017, I believe. Um, they made money, and I mean broadly speaking, made money selling physical things to people, and their repeat customers were were buying new devices every year, every two years, or whatever the time frame was, and they would have new people coming on board and Android switches and blah blah blah, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the you know it's still primarily the way they make money but the percentage of revenues and and whatever is going down because you know it's a mature market this was going to happen eventually right um but that by not giving us a way to compare the future with the past right they're cutting off uh anyone analysts press shareholders uh potential investors from uh, from clearly understanding how their business has evolved or at least changed and whether or not it's healthier or not. Mm. And that's, I think, should be illegal. Is I, this I, the I just, same thing I, Microsoft's doing, basically? Yeah, it's exactly yeah, the same thing. it is. For the same reasons? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Remember, uh, yes, it's exactly the same reasons. Yeah. Right. You know, er earnings anymore is like we want you to take your eye off this ball and look over here, right? <laughs> and it's a lot of but we don't really want right. to and tell right. you what's in here. Yeah, it's it's a yeah. shame. I think uh, yeah, it makes I, our I, job you know, harder, but it also I think it makes investors' jobs harder. I think about like mm -hmm. just think about something like the iPad. I'm 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 kind of doing this off the top of my head, but for several years, iPad sales fell year over year, quarter by quarter, and it happened for I don't remember the time frame, but for a, a long time, I, there was either one or two quarters in the past year where iPad revenues for the first time in many many years actually went up compared to the year ago quarter. Both of those jumps were caused not by more expensive iPad Pros or different types of iPads. It was because they lowered the price on the basic iPad. Mm -hmm. They actually, they found a way to raise, raise unit sales. And I think this might have in part informed this other thing they've done because it didn't really help. Like we sold more, but we're selling more of this $329, I almost called it a piece of, it's a nice machine actually, but this low-end device. We don't want to sell a $329 iPad. We want to sell it a $799 iPad Pro, you know? Yeah. And if we can't make money that way, we got to find another way to uh, get more money out of these people. And it can't be from you buy a new iPad every couple of years that, at that price, right? Mm -hmm. there, there has to be, I think from Apple's perspective, they have higher margin businesses, they have other business or uh, product lines that are doing much better than the iPad. How can we raise this ship in ways that are more meaningful to us financially than just unit sales? They don't want to play in the mass market.
Well, and if there were no consequences to Microsoft for doing this, there's going to be even few. I mean, no investor is going to walk away from Apple. Right, right. Let me yeah. have my completely uninformed view of this is that the law is vague and that over time, different companies and different industries have kind of played around with how transparent they need to be. No one ever got in trouble for doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's just we've just kind of slid into it. And if you get you get these kind of new younger CFOs going into these established tech companies and they're like fresh out of college and they're like, guys, you don't have to report this stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like you just I, I, I know this is super simple and I'm, I probably sound like an idiot to financial people, but I really I, th I think it's something like that. I, I, there's just I don't think the law has changed. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that these companies have just uh, like devolved the way they report things mm -hmm. and they, they're getting away with it. So. They're meeting the letter of the law. I think. I think too. I feel. It feels to me also uninformed about finances. So talking off the top of my head here, but um, yeah. it feels like a lot of Wall Street analysts care more about seeing what companies are doing in services, especially things like AI, than they care about what you're doing in hardware. It's like, oh yeah, okay, you're making hardware, but what's the future? The future is services, right? <laughs> the future is this, and that's. I mean, this is a when you talk mentality. to. When you talk to Wall Street analysts about Microsoft, they don't think they're being deceptive. They like what they're doing. I, I have yet to meet one that says, oh, man, I wish they disclose, you know, sales of Surface. They don't. Nobody says that. They say, yeah, but, I like that they're Surface doing the commercial sales, cloud. That's not 70 percent of Microsoft's business. I know. Like, no, I know. I, I, but, still. You know, but, you know, but remember, uh, back in the day, I don't, you know, I, I don't know the exact year when this was the case, but for much of the mm -hmm. time I've covered Microsoft and you as well, I would imagine. Uh, in recent years, anyway, three big businesses at Microsoft were uh, Office and Server and Windows. And right. before that, Windows was kind of number one, and then Office became bigger. And uh, you know, I don't remember the exact mix of how these things work, but they were always yeah. sort of roughly one third each. You know, most of what Microsoft was from a revenue and profit mm -hmm. perspective. And um, back in those days, uh, basically every quarter, you, you'd learn about Windows. License sales, remember, we could compare it. I used to run the numbers and say, on average, 17.6 uh, uh, million or 20 million uh, new Windows licenses would come online. Microsoft was really regular about spacing that mm -hmm. stuff out so that they could, because yep. what they really wanted was what they're working toward now, which is that subscription style revenue where it is super predictable mm -hmm. over time. That's not how those licenses were bought, but they were able to, you know, fudge the numbers to make it look that way because that's what you want, I guess, you know, financially, you want that kind of, stability and um you know there's kind of a i don't there was a clear cutness to it i don't you know i it, i yeah. uh you're counting real things you know there there are real things you can count there are metrics that matter uh that aren't just money uh, or, or revenues because oftentimes with microsoft what you talk about is revenues you don't have no idea if azure is profitable if uh, yeah. Xbox has ever been profitable or Surface has ever, you, you just have no idea. They, they just don't yeah. talk about it. Right. You know, you don't know what's floating the boat. There's always going to be this part of the company that's going gangbusters and is hugely profitable and mm -hmm. it can cover a lot of the losses that would be happening elsewhere in the business. True. You know, Google did that for years and years and when they split up into Alphabet, you suddenly realize like, Google makes 173% of their profits or something or some stupid thing like because the rest of it is taken to dump somewhere. It's just none yeah. of it makes any money. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. This is not my forte. I, I know there are people probably no. screaming at their, their phones right now or whatever, but <laughs> uh, it's not. I, it's not. But I, but like Mary Jo, and not for maybe as long, but I've certainly covered Microsoft's financials over the year. I've, I've really decried the lack of transparency that's gotten only worse and worse over the years. Mm -hmm. and, and when I see Apple do this, I'm like, yeah, here we go. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just yeah. another company. I, the one thing I liked about Apple was you could say, hey, here are the numbers. You know, we sold this many Macs. Well, guess what? You're six or seven or 11 percent of the PC market. Then <laughs> you gave us a number that's useful. Mm -hmm. I know it's not everything. You know, people always tell me that market share isn't everything. I know, but it, it's a hard number. It's still a hard mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. It's still meaningful. Mary Jo's showing really great restraint, not pulling out the gong or anything. <laughs> I just want to thank well, you, Mary Jo. For I'd like to no, think. I, I mean, she agrees I, with me. I, right? she agrees I, agrees with I do agree you. with yeah. you that it's frustrating for us not to see these numbers. And But you know what it, it does, too? Like, it's it's hilarious to me to watch every time it's earnings season, right? And so many journalists are like, oh, it's time. Like, we're going to learn all this stuff. And I'm like, you're not learning anything, really, yeah. you know? You're learning what they want you to pay attention to, but you're not really learning yeah. 
all about is, the company. This is what the Microsoft graph is really for. It so Microsoft can pick out the little pieces of the universe that mean <laughs> nothing that they can show you and say, look, yeah. there's a twenty percent growth over some number we've never told you what it was. You know, we, <laughs> we don't. It's uh, it's huge. You know, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. We just don't, I don't know. know. This frustrates Remember, me so we used much. to say I, that more. We used to say that, that a lot on the show. We used to say, we just don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now you well, know now we're going to say it a lot know. more when it comes to yeah. finances yeah. because. Yeah, true. Yeah. I, you know, obviously the SEC, which is the regulatory body that tells mm -hmm. companies what they have to, you know, publicly. This, these are publicly held companies. Sure. We're a privately held company. We don't have to tell you anything. But yep. uh, Twitter is, but uh, pub uh, publicly, although I think we're more forthright often with our information <laughs> than any of these sure. other companies. But uh, publicly held companies have a certain legal responsibility to file these right. quarterly uh, reports. Right. It's, it's, I think the intent is so that investors can get a clear picture of whether they want to be in the stock or not. Uh, of secondary benefit is to us as uh, journalists, but, but I don't think the SEC cares about journalists. I no, no, no. That's not my point. Uh, you yeah, don't do I don't this because why of they don't me care about or whatever. investors. I mean, it seems like I, that's that's always been my point. And like, yeah. like I said, I don't really follow this industry per se. I don't believe, to my knowledge, I don't think the laws have changed. I don't believe there's been any real deregulation of this industry, other than what I would call kind of a soft deregulation, because they're just not regulating. Right. <laughs> like, there's no, there's been no challenge to this lack of information that I've ever heard of right. from anyone. Uh, Toward any company. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, which means to me, no one cares. It's they, okay. They're okay with it. They're they okay are. with it. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. That's, yeah, so, clearly they're meeting the, the <laughs> standard that everyone agrees on. Except okay. for me. You, meet, <laughs> you don't meet the Paul Just, Therott standard, but uh, <laughs> I know. there you go. It's like it's, <laughs> I know. I listen. I'm I'm used to being the only guy left on the island. I get it. But <laughs> I got a more important question, really, one that really mm -hmm. uh, resonates to the core of my being. Mm -hmm. uh, should I download PUBG for the Xbox? <laughs> uh, it's free, right? I mean, it's free, right? So why not? You could give it a shot. I I, think I, I, I guess, bought it. I think the sad thing. Yeah, is I, I, bought I bought it. it. I yeah. the the performance is disappointing. And if you like this kind of game, frankly, Fortnite. I think Fortnite or even Fortnite. the Blackout mode in Black uh, Black Ops Four, Call of Duty, is is a better experience. I am, but at least it's free. Keeping my disc, <laughs> my powder dry, and my disc clear for mm -hmm. Fallout seventy six in there one you go. week. That's to me. That's exciting. See, I was okay with this game until they did their 76ers tie-in, and I'm like, I, I don't oh, know if I want to deal with no. the people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having the truth the comes out. 1970 Detroit Pistons on your team. Who wants oh, that? God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's coming to the uh, PlayStation 4 as well. No more exclusivity for Xbox. Yeah, as widely oh. rumored, right, for years, or for the last year or so. Um, I think we always knew this was a short time deal on Xbox, but uh, like my only issue with it is, you know, we had a year, and that's great. But the thing is, it wasn't even available as like the like the off? like the. I'm well, sorry. It was in. That's okay. It I'm was sorry. only available in preview form through September. Yeah. Um, and it's not that good. Get Fortnite. That's my opinion. More uh, you know, opinions vary. And but what's the blackout mode? Is that a battle royale version of Call of Duty? Yeah. So it, the latest Call of Duty has a blackout. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a battle royale game mode called Blackout, which oh. is uh, nice. yeah, more like Fortnite than PUBG, I guess. Although it maybe looks a little more like PUBG yeah. um, because it's Call of Duty. If that makes sense. So it's more about destruction and creation, I guess, is what yeah. I would say. I think they learned the Fortnite lesson that you shouldn't mm -hmm. charge for the game, give it away, and make money on dance moves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was talking with Lisa about the whole <clears throat> NFL dance move thing because you know <laughs> for many years you couldn't really taunt the other team by doing an elaborate right dance move, which when is you what you want TV. from a professional sports, by the way. But, but continue. <laughs> um, I was watching the Cowboys game the other night. I guess it was Monday Night Football, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I can't remember who they were playing. The opposing team, was it a sack or an interception or something, runs to the star in the middle of Dallas's field and goes, you know, does a taunt dance. 
And I'm saying, sure. they're going to throw a flag. No. And I realized, oh, I know why they changed the rules last year. Fortnite and, and similar See, games. I was going to say... I know why, too, because you were watching a Dallas game on Monday night, and it was terrible. And the only interesting thing that possibly could have happened was a guy dancing in the end zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I, I think that the NFL has said, oh, no, the kids, the kids, they like the taunt dance moves because it's in all we the go games. To, um, we go to baseball games, and there's this stuff up on the Jumbotron that's like people dancing. And I never understood what it was. And I play video games, you know. And then eventually someone kind of said something oh, about Fortnite. Fortnite. And I was dance. like, wait a minute. Is that what this is? <laughs> yes. Like the this is like invaded that. culture now? It's <laughs> native culture. That's too bad. And uh, <laughs> honestly, I really feel like that's what's happening in the NFL. Is is there? But it didn't start with Fortnite. I mean, I can't, World of Warcraft, well, you had those moves where you taunt. There were, it's been around for a while. No, I know. But I think we've had enough um, head injuries in the NFL that this suddenly seems like a good idea. <laughs> We're gonna let these guys. Yeah, I, I just don't. You can have. The only, I mean, you can have. Team, this is just like the money thing. Like I feel like I'm alone moves. in this one. Like when I go to the game, I want to watch the game. Not people why, dancing. Why, why, You're not alone. Entertainment that occurs it's around the game. I just. We're here it. for the game. Oh, but, a thick oh, but guy. Paul. Thick Paul. Even you are not such a curmudgeon. You don't love the kiss cam, <laughs> dude. <laughs> do you know what the kiss cam is, Mary Jo? Yes, I do. Oh, I know Paul I knows. You know what it is. I do. It's, in Boston, it's not, it was it's like no the P Delta, interest, my the friend. Delta <laughs> Dental Cam would come on the, in the Celtics games. I'd be like, guys, it's a Delta there is a basketball game cam. occurring. <laughs> no, right, it's right in front of you. That ticket you know, cost $80. <laughs> I know. But, you know, there a lot of us ha get dragged to sporting events, and you want some diversion. It's for like you. Dance yeah, that's, moves that's what we want to and now, The guys that got for dragged the there against their wills. Like, <laughs> Kiss <game. laughs> let's, let's accommodate those people. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you know, maybe if you, come back. have you ever been to a minor league game? Did you ever go see, like, the, the, yeah, I don't know, the Warwick Blue Sox or something? No. If you go to a, <laughs> if you go to a minor the league game. No. Red Sox I think is what the name you're looking for. We had... <laughs> We had uh, the the uh, up here in um, in uh, Ronert Park. We had the Ronert, the Sonoma County Crushers. They were called, mm -hmm. and it's minor league baseball. So that you know, you're watching basically a guy really? who's a, good. Well, it's like not triple A. It's single A. Oh, oh. No, so you're no, basically no. watching a guy you're who's a carpenter baseball. by day, right? <laughs> yep. And he's you know yep. likes to play a little ball. And sure. so the only way they get people in the stands is they do crazy stuff throughout mm -hmm. the game. Every inning, you know, there's the one where they, they put a baseball bat on home plate and a kids, the kids line up and they and they put their forehead on the baseball bat and they go around and around and around and around and then yeah. try to run to first base. Yeah, Mary Jo knows what I'm talking about. I do. Yep. Um, so do I, as you can tell from the expression <laughs> of my face. And I'm like, thank goodness they do that. Otherwise, what are we sitting there for? The crushers. You used to have a contest if you win it. Like the next game, you get to sit, sit in this big purple Barca lounger, like out on practically on the field to watch the game. Like you put your feet up. You That's know. your reward. That's your yep. reward. That's the prize. I'm. I'm I know. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get worse as I get older. I, I, yeah. There's no. Yeah. I, there's no relief for me. It's. Uh, it's to this is. This stuff is always. People like you, something to complain about. Well, I, I'm not really looking for something to complain about. That's the thing. It just it just finds me. I'm. I'm we just you know, need you to, to buy him that you're... get off my lawn shirt, and so he can wear it. I do I went to. I'm really super concerned about my lawn, but I would like the sanctity of the game to be preserved. You know? <laughs> I went to a hockey game and a fight broke. No, I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. I will say hockey. Hockey is a sport I'm not particularly interested in, and I don't know if it's because of the ice or whatever it is, but. Hockey, in my experience, and I've seen both, um, I don't know what the minor league thing is called, but you know, minor league and as, as well as professional hockey games are among some of the best sporting events you can ever see because it's pretty much just the sport. There isn't a lot of other baloney. There's a little bit of the, you know, shoe t-shirts. It's t also fast-paced, which it makes is. it better. I'd rather watch but hockey basketball's any day fast than baseball. Too. What, well, I mean, you know, but basketball... It's like uh, the game has gone on too long without a timeout. They just call a TV timeout. Now, like, they've, oh, they're trying to... On football, you know? if you're in a TV game, which every game is now, they got a guy yeah. with big red gloves yeah. <laughs> on down on the field. He's oh God, this, I, the big red. Hope gloves. you don't have any momentum going, guys. We got it. You know, Nestle's got a product they're trying to sell. You know, so, you know the only the job, only good you know, sport. Talk to the control room to say okay. stop the game. We're going to a commercial or only good sport World Cup because you can't stop. You the can't game. stop it. 
I love it. There's no commercials. It's awesome. And then there's 3,000 commercials as soon as the game's over. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. <laughs> No, I love that part. I, I agree with you. That's the best part <laughs> of the World Cup. What has happened? <laughs> this is like, um, you know, Mary Jo giving me sports advice is like Mary Jo giving me like burger advice. Oh. Like I, <laughs> it, it is oh. pretty much. Every four years, something wonderful happens. Yeah, the Olympics. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> also the you election. You watch the Olympics, do you? Yeah, all every 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 Olympics. Mary Joe, you know who you're talking to here, right? This is this guy will watch any sport. No, I, the Olympics are awesome. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not kidding you. We're, <laughs> we're talking about the Summer Olympics, Mary Joe, not those Both? boring oh, winter, winter Olympics. Olympics too. Guys, the Olympics are even worse than baseball. <laughs> the Olympics are the only time it's okay to watch ice skating. I don't. It is. I tried the to bring Olympics my daughter awesome. when Abby was little. I tried to bring her to a baseball game, and she has the same exact opinion of you, as you, Mary Jo Foley. And she said, "Why don't these seats? Don't they? Why don't they make them so they turn around so I could face away from the game?" <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom from the young. She also, I, I took the whole family to a Niners game, got fifty-yard line seats to see them retire Jerry Rice's uh, number. Mm. Yep. And, and they left at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. Anyway, yeah. let's uh, <clears throat> let's take a little break. Let's talk about esports. What did you talk about? Have you talked about my Have you talked about my Surface Book yet? No, we're going to do that Not next, Brad. Yet. <laughs> Bradley, he's wearing those uh, Surface headphones, isn't he? Is. Do you like you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this tip to what we just talked about. Oh, good. Go mm -hmm. go to work. Do your writing magic, Paul. <laughs> speaking speaking magic in this case, but speaking but first. Well, you have to write it first, then you can speak it. While I talk about Captera, <laughs> how about that? Captera. You know, the the New Year's coming, and I know what happens uh, towards the end of the year. It gets a little slow around the office, right? And the boss gets an idea. Let's automate. We're going to go out and get software for our uh, CRM. Or we're going to get, uh, let's go get, all right, your, ch and then he goes to you and says, all right, your job is to find the best dental office management software. And what do you do? Do you Google it? I know some of you will actually call me on the radio show. Like, I know, I don't know. What you should be doing is going to Captera. Find software for your business fast with Captera. Captera is a free directory of all the best business software with hundreds of thousands of real reviews written by real users, a great ability to compare head-to-head -head different software. So you can you, you can have checkboxes say, I need this feature, this feature, I don't need that feature. You'll you'll get all those software, and they have so many that you know you can really narrow it down and still get 12 different programs, and then do a head-to-head -head comparison, which ones are web-based, which ones are hard drive-based, which, you know, and it's amazing. And it's completely free. 600 categories of business software, hundreds of thousands of real user reviews. And right now, they have something free for you. It's called the Big Book of Free Software. 300 different software tools, all of them completely free. The book is free. And... It's just a way to get you to go to captera.com slash windows because when you're there, you might also want to use the Captera search engine. But you know what? The book is a great thing to have. 300 absolutely free programs that do everything from project management to e-commerce to email marketing, everything you might need. It's actually a great uh, idea starter because maybe you, you know, maybe you don't know that there's software to do this or that. And then now you know you might want to do it. C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. Captera.com slash Windows. The book of big book of free software is free. The service is free. There's no it's great. There's no sign up. It's easy. Just go to Captera.com slash Windows. Millions of people use Captera each month. It's the best kept secret for business software. But I don't want it to be a secret anymore. Captera.com slash Windows. Paul Therot, Mary Joe Foley. I think it's back of the book time, so uh, let us invite Paul Therott to step to the podium with his pick of the week or tip of the week, whichever you want to do here. You want to do a tip? Co-worker <laughs> at uh, 
BWW is serious. Is uh, working <laughs> on know, a book called Below the Right over you perfectly. He does. Yeah, no, he thinks so as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's written a book called Below a Surface, which is kind of the history of Microsoft Wait, Surface. What's business. it called? I'm, Below a Surface. No, it's not called that, Leo. It's called Below oh. a Surface. Oh, well, that's I get it. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's it's it's. It, I think this is going to fascinate uh, people name. who are yeah. uh, watching this podcast. You know, people into this kind of industry and stuff. So. Um, the story, uh, he tells a lot of stories, a lot of inside stories. In fact, there's some, a bunch of scoops in here that I won't reveal, but um, I just edited the chapter about the NFL deal. And the interesting kind of historical side note to that is that the NFL and Microsoft linked up to do um, a special viewing mode for NFL games on Xbox One consoles, um, not to sell, not to use Surface devices. And uh, Tammy Reller apparently was the first person who was kind of approached with this thing. And they were like, well, maybe we could, you know, we hear tablets are big, maybe we could use some of your tablets, and she was completely uninterested in that. Uh, but it eventually found its way to use of Medi, and uh, the deal kind of changed over time. But it's possible that Surface would not have uh, continued as a brand had they not done this deal, because it actually got the brand out into the world at a time when the brand had kind of failed. You know, they had the first disastrous launch of Surface RT. The devices weren't selling very well. And uh, this constant promotion of Surface on the NFL actually might have saved the brand. Wow. Um, you know, no, I was Microsoft watching did. last night on. Uh, I was watching the the election coverage on MSNBC. The whole team yeah, they all had, had surf, Surface had Pros, Surface yeah. Pros. Yep, it with yeah, very I prominent Windows logos. I, I take it that was like the yeah. NFL deal, right? The NFL deal is even better because you see surfaces it's, everywhere. It's, you know, very prominent, yeah. and um, obviously there were some mistakes in the beginning. A bunch of people referred to them as uh, <laughs> iPads. iPads. Uh, <laughs> Bill Belichick uh, infamously Ted, tried go to go get your one iPad the there, and uh, we'll uh, take a look at this play. <laughs> No, but you know what? Uh, with after a rough start, actually, that thing's really worked out for them. That, In a way, that them calling has... it an iPad was a good thing. It, it got <laughs> more attention as a result, I think. Right. Well, and anyway, Surface and is Bill still Belichick around. And... throwing it like a frisbee that that got <laughs> that really got some attention. And the I love just, the uh, big. Just want to point out the problem was the Wi-Fi, not the device. I like the big blue rubber, hard yeah. rubber thing. It's the same thing that Amazon puts on the Kindle for kids. <laughs> That key, yeah. that's, it's great. It protects it against... It's the thing they put on that little uh, probe that they launched at Mars, and it kind of rolls around <laughs> yeah. on the ground and pops out of it. <laughs> you know? I love those ideas. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, it will be available, uh, I think, by the end of this month. Um, I've got probably another week or so of editing to go, and then... Oh, oh he let you edit it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's been an interesting thing, you know. Um, really? Uh, I, I, I'm ignoring everything he says. <laughs> I I'd, I'd forgotten parts of the story. It's it's very interesting. So I think um, I think people will like it. It's um, called Blow the Surface. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> below. I don't know why. It's, this, again, domain names are hard. But that was part of the reason. Like yeah. uh, Below the Surface might have made more sense. Uh, but that's taken by, I don't know, a mortuary company or whatever it is. But, it's called Below um, Surface. Two words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Below. The Four sur syllables. Oh, two words. Uh, yeah. Below Surface. Um, yes. Dive. So, also, it is the beginning of the month. I think the last time we did the show must have been, oh, it was Halloween, right? So, wow. uh, actually, the Xbox Game Pass stuff might have just become available in that day. This is a particularly good month for this, um, especially the first half of the month. So, if you have, um, uh, I'm sorry, not Xbox Game Pass. Uh, I'm losing my mind. Let me look it up. Uh, games with gold, not uh, Game Pass. But uh, Xbox games with gold uh, became available a day early. So it's Battlefield 1 on uh, the Xbox One and Assassin's Creed, the original one on Xbox 360. Those are awesome games. So make sure you stag those. And then this is kind of apropos of nothing other than the fact that I love Audible, but they have this Audible Originals thing. I love these. And love um, these. every month you get your choice. Yeah. So you can pick two of these things. Um, I this Here's why this is awesome, aside from the fact that these things are free. This has caused me to listen to stuff that I would never have yes. listened to. What do you, and I what have are found some things to? that I I love. So, like, last month, the big thing for me was the um, – oh I just forgot his name. Jeez, uh, <laughs> I'm losing my head here. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just look it up. I'm sorry. Should, this I month – okay, so let me just – let me do this month first. This month, uh, Nick Offerman, who is the yes. kind of actor, comedian, whatever, Twain's is Feast. doing this thing called Twain's Feast. Yeah. This, is, this is unbelievably good. And it's just basically what they – someone had read the – Mark Twain book, uh, Vag I think it's called Vagabond in Europe, or yeah. whatever the name of that was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, abroad in Europe, or whatever it was. But 
a vagabond abroad or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it, basically this guy was traveling in Europe and he was missing home and he started making a list of all the food that he missed from his childhood and when he was growing up. And he, uh, he was like, I'm going to have this 81 course meal or whatever when I get back. And he never actually did it, but they took this thing, broke it down into parts and they do an eight course meal with other writers and comedians and whatever, a famous chef. And they tell you the history of all of these food items. They have raccoon and turtle soup and trout and it's, it is astonishingly good. It, it's it's really really good. I had a real. There are um, six of them each month, and I had a really yeah, pick two. You can choose two. I had a hard yep. time. I ended up picking. I didn't. I almost picked that one, but I wanted the Stephen Fry's Victorian Secrets. Yep. I almost took that one, and then I got the I Have a Nice Day, which is a basically a play with Dick yep. Cavett, Billy Crystal, Annette Benning, Kevin Klein. Yeah. This was a tough month because those were tough. both interesting. They're I, all good. I took so the re, I, this month the other one I took was called Strong Ending. And it's basically these people who come back from war and they have PTSD. Right. And, and one of the ways you can deal with this is you can start telling, you get in front of people and you tell jokes. And I have not listened to it yet, but last month's thing was called Hi Bob. So it's Bob Newhart. Sorry, I couldn't remember his I name. I loved Hi Bob. He, he, yeah, that was great. Hi Bob is amazing. It's basically yeah. just three and a half hours of him having conversations with famous comedians. And it is awesome. I, it's I awesome. couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. And then I got the, uh, awesome. and I love this too, the Carrie Mulligan Boys and Girls, which is a, a one woman show that's off Broadway. You can hear, it's a whole recording of a one woman show. So yeah. Audible's, I kick it, just knock it another just part. A, we should mention uh, they're a sponsor. I, this, they're not buying this mm -hmm. segment, but nope. um, uh, I agree with you. This I is think, what I've been listening to. I, this I, has been my put, last couple put of put my books on the back burner, which is a shame. Yeah. Well, no, that's okay. You know, I, you know what? A good audio book is like a good Netflix series. It's hard because when you're in the middle of it, it's amazing and you don't want it to end and That's then right. it does. And then nice the next thing is else. always terrible. Yeah. It's and nice and when you don't have something else, <laughs> no, it's, it's awful. No, I agree. And when you can do these kind of back-to-back -back things like this where they're all really good, it's excellent. And the originals tend so, to be shorter. They tend to be yeah. not a full-size book, although some of them yeah, are. which I really appreciate. Yeah. 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 I love them. I, I, so I, one of the ones, I will say, you know, one, one of the ones I chose last month wasn't fantastic. Um, but it was short, so it was like an hour. Right. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Was, you know, I kind of got through it. It was fine. Yeah. It's, it's okay. It's not like I bought a 44-hour Stephen King thing and didn't like it. You know, um, um, we're listening to The Outsider right now. Lisa and I try to have yep. one book the two of us listen to, mm -hmm. and it's The yep. Outsider. It's a little slow moving, but it's still gripping because it's like, what's going <clears throat> on? Yeah, it's a good one. I I listened to that when it first came out. I, I always do the Stephen King stuff like the well, day it comes you, out. So by the way, yeah, I remember you recommended it. That's why we got it. Yeah. His latest book uh, is called Elevation, and it was terrible. Oh, <laughs> so thank you. that one just came out. Save I don't me. know last week, and I it's yeah. short. It's only in fact it's shorter than its running time because there's two stories on the recording, but it's not. I, I have to go. I'm gonna have to go read reviews. I don't even understand the point of it. I I didn't. I didn't think it was very good. Uh, and do you have an app pick of the week? I do. Uh, Microsoft has released My Microsoft Launcher 5 for Android. This is the version that adds timeline support, right? So they talked about this back in May at uh, Build. And it's it, the, the timeline feature is actually in beta, so you have to enable it. But Microsoft Launcher is their um, Android Launcher replacement, right? So it's a full-featured launcher. It has all the UI stuff and whatever. But um, what timeline means is that you can swipe over from the home screen and instead of seeing a feed or your calendar items or whatever, you can see you can see your timeline like you see on Windows 10 when you hit the task view uh, button or you do Windows key plus uh, tab. And because it's cross device and it's matched up to your Microsoft account, you'll see all of the apps and documents you worked on across all of your devices, Windows PCs and Android phones. And if you were, for example, uh, working on a Word document on your PC and now you're commuting to work or whatever and you want to do a couple of little edits, it's right there. You don't have to go kind of try to find it somewhere in OneDrive or through the Word app or whatever. You'll see it listed by date, you know, with the device name you were on, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is a key part of Microsoft's cross-device strategy. So it's finally, you know, kind of starting to happen. Um, and then uh, tie, when you tie this to like the, or if you combine this, I guess I would say with the uh, your phone app on Windows 10, you can kind of see how you can kind of go back and forth and, and use the two devices together in ways that weren't possible previously. So it's kind of interesting. Nice. Uh, iOS uh, users, uh, you're out of luck. Um, but eventually, I don't think it's there yet, but uh, eventually Microsoft Edge, the web browser app uh, for iOS, will also offer a view of the timeline so you can access it from that app as well. But I don't, I don't think that's out yet. And then just a, a quick note, um, if you use Microsoft SwiftKey, they are now testing in beta 
something that should have been there a couple of years ago, but basically it's a Bing search button right in the keyboard. So Google does this already. I would imagine, I don't really know that much about other mobile keyboards. I wouldn't be surprised if Samsung's keyboard already had this or Apple's did, but uh, basically what you're going to do is have a search button in the middle, uh, you know, at the top of the keyboard when you hit it, a pane expands and you can search for images, search for text, whatever it might be. And that, and the idea here is that you're working on something. It could be a text message or an email or whatever it is. And you want to reference something in hyperlink. And instead of switching back and forth different apps, you can just do the search right from there. And you never leave the thing you're working on. Get the link or whatever it is. Go back onto the uh, thing you're working on and it will be right there. Um, it's not available in the publicly shipping version, but anyone can get the beta. So if you want the beta version of Microsoft SwiftKey, you, you can check that out right now. Very cool. And now we shift gears to Mary Jo Foley and her code name of the week. This is actually not a code name. Oh, Enterprise um, Pick of the Week. Sorry. I know. It yes. sound, no, you know what? It sounds like a code I, name, I and I wondered, yeah. I wondered if it was one when I first heard it. The, the Enterprise Pick is called Kaizala, K-A-I-Z-A-L-A. -A -A. Um, and I remember a few years ago when Microsoft came out with this originally, it was a Microsoft Garage incubation project, but it was just for the Indian market. And in one of the Indian languages, it's supposedly a rough translation of what happened, oh. Kai Zale. Okay. Um, so I, I kind of ignore it. I ignored it, I admit. I knew it was this messaging app. It was sort of like WhatsApp, except aimed at business customers. And it doesn't have a video component, but it lets you kind of chat among yourselves if you're a department or a group or even across a company and just kind of have a self-contained chat app. Well, it turns out they decided to commercialize it. Um, there's a free version of this that's a standalone version. There, You can also subscribe to it for $1.50 per user per month if you want to have the pro version, which adds some reporting capabilities and other things. But the interesting part and the reason I made it the pick this week is Microsoft is starting to roll Kaizala out for free if you have an Office 365 commercial subscription as part of your subscription. It's going to be turned off by default, but if your administrator wants to turn it on, you, you're going to have this extra chat app for use in your company if you want it. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, I have to say. Some people are like, oh, this is awesome. Like, we get this free chat app. Other people are like, oh, my goodness, another communications app from Microsoft. They have Teams. They have Skype. They have Skype for Business. They have Yammer. And now they have this. So what are we supposed to use where? So I think it's good that they're giving people this as an optional free chat app if you somehow find a need for it and want to deploy it. But I have to also agree with some of the critics that now there's another Microsoft chat slash communications app that you have to decide if it's right for your company and how it fits into your whole organizational scenario. Okay. Kaizala. Kaizala. <laughs> and it does sound like a code name. It does. It sounds like yeah. an incantation. Kaizala. <laughs> it's the final name of the product, so yeah. And uh, there's one name I can pronounce. That's Office 365. <laughs> Enterprise pick yeah. number two. So I don't know if you guys heard about this, but um, a couple of weeks ago, Microsoft said, sent out, I think through the Office 365 portal, a note to people saying, hey, this is going to be cool. We're going to start automatically rolling out through email tips to users about how to use Office 365 products, tips and tricks. And many administrators immediately freaked out. And they're like, wait, this is going to look like phishing to oh. people. Like we've been training them Yikes. not to click on Good this, point. right? Good point. And so there was so much outcry that Microsoft has now, quote, paused its plan to automatically start pushing out these tips through Office 365. They have not canceled it. They say they're taking it under consideration and figuring out what to do next about it. Um, so if you're somebody who's an IT administrator and you're dead set against this, you should weigh in with Microsoft and tell them why. Um, if I also heard from some people who thought it was a good idea and they said, you know what? I think it's good. Our users would like to have this free extra training, but I think they, they shouldn't have made it something they were pushing, even though it was shut off by default. I think they should have made it an optional. If you want to add this in, you can, instead of everybody's getting this, it'll be there, but it will be something you can shut off. Interesting. So, yeah. It's paused for now. And I have another question that's completely off topic, but I notice in your headline you use the word flak, F-L-A-K. Yeah, so this isn't my story, but yeah. Oh, it's Liam Tongues. It should be C-K. 
Should it or not? Shouldn't it? I think Paul might have an opinion since he is an expert on warfare thanks to his many, <laughs> many years playing Call of Duty. I'm listening, yep. Because there's a, it's a flak is something that you... Oh, oh flak no. from a plane, from a like cannon. in the back of a plane. Yeah, when they... It's when they, K, oh, no. not CK. That's what I thought. That, that yeah, you're right. No, it's correct. With a K. So it is correct. Yeah. It is correct, yep. It's both the aircraft, anti-aircraft fire and strong criticism. Yes, both. I, so what's the C? The C is like flak, so like a flak. So what about the flak. spelling yes, F L A Q U E? <laughs> no, no, what flak. does that mean? I'm a flak. Q U E. Is there such a spelling? That's a kind of, it's a kind of. <laughs> is that like the French version of yeah. flak? No, it's a kind of pudding. Is it really? No. No. Uh, Someone asked me one time how my son's name was spelled. My son's name is Mark, and I said M A R Q U E. <laughs> <laughs> I, my uh, one of my college roommates yeah. spelled it M A R C Q K. Ah, jeez. Wow. Wow. Now we move on to the highlight, really, I think everybody agrees, of the show. Yes. Hmm. Beer! <laughs> yes, so this week for the beer pick, I'm picking a brown ale from Cigar City Brewing in Tampa, Florida. So Cigar City See, that's makes a lot... that's an infelicitous combination. <laughs> but I wait till you hear. Okay. How has that word okay. come up twice today? Infelicitous twice. <laughs> So the name the name of this brown ale is called Cigar City Cubano Ooh, Espresso, which okay. also sounds kind of like an oxymoron, right? That's why it's brown, though. Okay, <laughs> right. I get it? Yeah. So it's a it's a brown ale made with quote Cuban style roasted espresso beans, oh, and yeah. I was like, what does that mean? Oh, that's and so then right. you look at the description on Beer Advocate, and it says Cuban espresso is a popular drink in Cigar City in Tampa because it has many Sicilian and Cuban immigrants. Yes. Hmm. Um, so if you Not like the flavors, of <laughs> no rum, no rum in this beer. It's um, Is there Coca Cola. No Coca Cola. No Just Cuban style espresso beans. Now, Cuban, um, Cubano yeah. coffee is phenomenal. Yeah, love yeah. it. So if you like the coffee toffee kind of light English style brown flavors, this is your beer. Yay! Yep. I'm a happy man. <laughs> Go and get me some Cubano style espresso brown ale. We have a uh, new sponsor, which I'll talk about later. Um, but we should send you one of these. It's called Hopsy, H O P S Y. Yeah. Do you know about that? What is it? No. It's like a little pony keg that you install mm -hmm. in your uh, refrigerator, and, and they send you different beers from all over the country. Oh, and, cool. So I'm excited because yeah. I'm going to get, and they also do ciders and kombucha. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And I think it's small. It looks pretty small. Like you could go put it in your fridge. I don't know. I have to look at mini, it. You might plug it in. I just got one. Yeah, it's it's like cool. A, it's like a pony. I'm yeah. surprised it never took off. You know, I, I know there were a couple of beers you could get, and I think um, Heineken might have been one of them, which is terrible, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a mini keg thing, and yeah. you can... Yeah, it's it's a good idea. Um, I'm just... It's I just kind of curious. Will, they'll probably... I mean, I imagine they're going to want to buy Windows Weekly since we're all a bunch of drunks, so... <laughs> Uh, yes. No, I'm just kidding. right. Uh, because of the I mean, we pick. do have an alcohol pick literally every week. <laughs> we do. You know, <laughs> if I asked, every show would have one. I know that there's no problem getting the other guys to do that as well. Oh no, you know, I don't we think to... it's a problem. I'm just saying she no. thought of doing it. <laughs> like, and you know, you know, we have to deal with things like 1809 and stuff. You, you need mm -hmm. you need a beverage you need for that. It's a wonder nice we don't drink more, beverage. Leo. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just drink responsibly, kids. <laughs> yes. Actually, kids don't drink at all. Well, right. Yeah. Adults should drink responsibly. Um, can it be? It's, we've already come to the end of the show. Such yeah. a great show. Thank you, Paul Therat. You'll find his work at therat.com. That's his blog. <clears throat> it's also his site. It's his everything. <laughs> it's just my like be all and my it's end all. Be all and end all. Uh, and it's not just Paul. There's other great people. It's a really good site for Windows watchers. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't forget, of course, his books, including the Field Guide. To Windows 10 available at leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley writes for ZDNet, uh, files regularly at uh, allaboutmicrosoft.com. And together they make Windows Weekly happen every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, now 1900 UTC. If you want to stop by and watch live at twit.tv slash live, you can listen live too. We have an audio and video stream. You can also get, uh, if you do that, by the way, join in the chat room. Lots of nice people in there, irc.twitch.tv. And you can also uh, get um, 
on-demand versions of all of our shows, either at our website, twit.tv slash WW, or subscribe in your favorite podcast application. You'll get it automatically the minute it's available. Paul, Mary Jo, thank you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. On Windows Weekly.